Uh, Jeremy Flores is going to be taking on Conor O'Leary and Mick Fanning. Jeremy, you can tell that the conditions were frustrating for him yesterday. Conor O'Leary hasn't caught fire yet this season. And Mick Fanning, I I've got to say, it's probably the, the most nervous performance or anxious performance we've ever seen from Mick with a jersey on. Up late at night sometimes, or up early. A, a look at, at what he does you know, or what he has done in his life. Yeah, absolutely, as we see Jeremy up and riding on the left. Fell on his first wave, trying to make up for it now. And just can't hang on to that final manoeuvre. <laughs> but I thought it was a classic comment, Jeremy, watching the warm-up <laughs> session this morning, seeing Italo stomp two airs. Be interesting to see what happens in the opening exchange. Jeremy now can just completely stalk this lineup, looking for opportunity. He's gonna find some cover on this right. Nice little tube to get started. Little tail drop float. Gets that body moving. And that's a bit more like it for the Frenchman. Wave number three, he will convert into points. And he'll take the early lead here. Go down into third priority. So really critical takeoff actually. Straight under the lip, gets the line. And we know Jeremy's one of the best tube riders on the tour. Gets the lip gliding floater, projects down the line then finishes off with the with the foam hit. Here's the angle we all love to see. So look at Jeremy just tucked so tight inside the barrel, just dragging that back hand to feel the wall, to feel where he is in the tube. So Mick up now. This is his first ride. Beautiful flow as always. Great placement, incredible timing. And squeaks in one final maneuver on the inside. That was something he wasn't able to do yesterday. Link away from start to finish. He had one right that was okay, but that was much stronger, that one. It was just a great surfed ride, so watch this. Gets the first little speed snap, and that's a better one. Bit more critical, pivoting off the tail, and again. So he wound up on the second and the third, and gets the late little hit. I love this angle here where you're looking down the line. You're kind of looking at what Mick's looking at. As he streaks down there, anticipating the next turn, nice and tight in the pocket. And uh, the judges will be really focusing on how he stayed right in that power source, Ron. Flow, Rich, has always been the, the key to mix approach. Uh, does have big individual turns he can lean on. But his placement of turns and his variety in, in his surfing when he comes off the bottom it has always helped him score well. Yeah, he's just textbook perfect when it comes to technique and his timing and flow. You can see here just the momentum. Again, we keep piping on about it. The upper body leading the lower body. And, uh, well, Mick, he's kind of got that little coat hanger back arm that it's a bit of a trademark for him on his backhand. All these little things that the judges are looking at. Back to the lineup now. Flores looking for a solid second score. Trying to get rid of a 1.87. And you can see that there's just a, an extra commitment in his surfing today compared to that opening seeding round. Jeremy had a frustrating day yesterday. A little upset with himself there that he wasn't able to finish that final ride. Well, Mick, in a perfect position for this one. Places that first turn nicely. Clean float. Doesn't get as much room to move as the first ride, but it'll back up that first number nicely. And Conor O'Leary... I think the pressure will just start to, to build on him ever so slightly here. Yesterday's performance, let's check the replay straight up into the lip and gets up on the, the little lip gliding floater, jumps off the roof of it, comes down perfectly clean. Yeah, on a new piece of equipment too, his first choice he broke on his last wave yesterday just to uh, add insult to the, uh, the lacklustre performance. But bouncing back pretty well here this morning. And Mick is definitely one of those guys. He never really seemed to have trouble uh, clicking in the gear early in the morning. He's always up early. Just under 17 minutes to go. And Flores has a number to come through. But he's looking to uh, throw that away. He had a 2.5 on his previous ride. He smashed that one. And there's an indication of where Jeremy's head is at this morning. Gets the finish that he wants and celebrates the fact. He's laughing at himself. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love the fact. I respect it. 
you never have to guess where Jeremy's head is that throughout the celebration and I think he was laughing at himself well shades of classic Narrabeen left starting to show here and Jeremy just hammers it but watch the energy and the force and the power in that last turn and you might be thinking <laughs> hang on why is he claiming this last re-entry but it's it's what he did and what he's done in this heat so far that's getting him excited I think also that's probably one of the best waves that we've seen in the event so far Jeremy's just connected with and he made good use of it so uh, he's going to add to that 4.17 which he scored earlier and should have a decent number on the way Luke Egan joins us this morning and Luke this is a great heat for you because uh, in your final years on the championship tour you competed against both Jeremy and Mick Fanning um, maybe caught a couple of heats and he's up against it now yeah as you see him on his first wave right now first opportunity for Connor and a couple of nice turns that comes off on the inside Mick Fanning just getting a little caught on that one I really like the intensity of Mick this morning we saw him happy go lucky Mick yesterday but uh, just wanted to note when you haven't surfed a, a WCT heat in a long time it's not until you have the jersey on and be out there that you realize how intense these heats are how hard you need to redline every aspect of your performance it's so epic to watch I've really missed watching those clean perfectly technical uh, linking turns of Mick and uh, he's just sure he's doing it out there today yeah definitely uh, really is linking nicely I was listening to uh, the world champ local boy Damien Hardman on the uh, lineup podcast just yesterday afternoon and he was saying um, or asked what Mick's chances were like at this event seen him chasing perfect waves and concentrating on on uh, his surfboards and maybe going in a little bit of a different uh, area of fun, more fun boards and then maybe longer rails when the waves are bigger, big arcing turn. Um, trying to overcome scoliosis and a number of other injuries but Flores at the moment leading this heat and looking to shut it down by getting rid of a 4.17. <laughs> Never really connected with that wave the way he would have liked. But he did keep his opponents off it. Less than that, and Conor O'Leary's still got a chance to turn this heat. He's got priority out here at the moment. He's going to have to make a move on this wave. Nothing Fanning can do. And Conor chasing this one down. Will it stay open for him? Needs something big. Chasing a 6-4-4. Oh. And he did, he's just forced to throw himself out into the flats there. And unfortunately for Conor, it's not going to pan out. Frustrating loss here it was always going to be difficult but Conor O'Leary is a guy that will wash his losses off pretty well but this one stings you can see it on his face Fanning bounces back he's going to be going through to the next round who will he match up against we're going to find out after the break and we'll introduce another big elimination round heat here there's the heat score totals pretty close one between the two veterans O'Leary just never really got things going